And if you're Ralph Ranick and you're reporting into Ten Hag and asking and answering him honestly, which I suspect he will be, and if you're Van der Beek and answering him honestly, which I suspect he will be, and we know Edwin Van der Sar's over there, you know, who will be at, you know speaking to Ten Hag honestly, they'll be saying be very careful. They'll be saying be very careful about going to Manchester United because it can be a graveyard at this moment in time for reputations. Gary Neville. Speaking on his latest podcast after Man City's 2 all draw with Liverpool, he spoke about Eric Ten Hag. Buzzword there, honesty. So what I want to do in this video is take a look at Gary Neville's comments about Eric Ten Hag. Maybe his warnings for Eric Ten Hag. And speak about them honestly. Speak about them in the comments. I want to know what you think about his opinion on Eric Ten Hag, on the situation, whether or not it is a graveyard. And let's be completely honest. There's a lot of truth in what Gary Neville has to say in these comments. That's why I want to run through him, as I always do. I like doing these videos on United People's TV. I think it's important to take a look at what the pundits have to say and also to speak about them truthfully and honestly in the comments. What I try and do here on United People's TV. So make sure you subscribe down in the comments. Down in the comments, just subscribe down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a ding every time I go live with the video. But in this video, let's take a look here and let's react to what Gary Neville had to speak about when it comes to Eric Ten Hag, Manchester United, Ralph Randick, everything to do with the players at the moment, because there's a lot to discuss. Let's get straight into it. Let's listen to what Gary has to say. And what I'll do is I'll pause the video at different occasions so we can discuss what Gary talks about. And, you know, I've read this morning that Eric Ten Hag wants all these demands met or else he won't come to the club. You imagine in the next week, 10 days, they can't get Ten Hag over the line because of what's happening at the moment and how bad the club is and the state that the club's in. Well, people in the Netherlands are probably asking, him, do you want this job now? Well, Have a good look at it. You I don't think anybody in the Netherlands will be saying, do you want this job? It's Manchester United. I know because we're United fans and we're, we're in the midst of it and the chaos that's at the club, this job is an incredible job for who can be the man that comes to turn it all around. And Eric Ten Hag, I think, will want that. But if you're looking at the demands, it's something that we've we've seen everywhere. If we go over here to David Ornstein saying on his podcast, he's saying Eric Ten Hag would want a lot of detail included in his contract. Assurances, clauses, guarantees in writing. If all of his expectations are met, he will sign for Manchester United. And that's, yeah, as I said, it feels now a case of when and not if. And I hope that doesn't come back to bite me. But what Gary's saying there about, you know, what if it didn't happen? And the only reason it wouldn't happen now is if the Glazers do not want to relinquish control. That's all this is. This isn't Eric Ten Hag asking for a £400 million, maybe unreasonable budget in his first season. This isn't Eric Ten Hag asking for total control with no input from anybody. This is Eric Ten Hag asking Manchester United to have the things in place that a football club of our size in the modern game should have in place. Now, I've spoken about this before on the live stream this morning, maybe in a, a videos previously. His list of demands, if he took that same list to City or Liverpool, the list will be ticked like 80% before he even asked the question. It's Manchester United's fault for not having those structures in place for the fact that we can have this conversation. But how incredible... There's, there's been protests at United. We've had them in 2005. We had them in 2010. We had the protests after the European Super League. But imagine we miss out on Eric Ten Hag on, on or what I would consider a very elite level coach who's willing to come to Manchester United, who wants to come to Manchester United. If we miss out on him simply because we don't give him what he needs to operate at the club, that could be a whole different level of protest, I think. So anyway, let's carry on and see what Gary has to say. You look at sort of what they're doing to players, Manchester United currently. There isn't a player that, that has grown, really. And you look at what they did to Van der Beek. And if you're Ten Hag, I think you're on the phone to Van der Beek. About the Van der Beek situation, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, in my opinion. He didn't get enough opportunities in the Premier League, no. But I don't really think that he did enough. It was more the fact that Fred and McTominay just weren't playing good enough and the fact that he still didn't get the game time that seemed odd. But at, at Everton, he, I was annoyed that he went to Everton instead of Crystal Palace. I thought it would have been a much better loan spell. Lo and behold, I was proven correct. I don't think the Donny van der Beek situation will be... Of course, he'll be on the phone to him. Donny was a key component in 2018-19 for that Ajax team that got to the Champions League semis. I don't think Donny would completely warn him away from United, though. That's my opinion. I might be wrong there. You're thinking, what's it like there, Donny? He ain't going to be saying anything good, is he? So I suspect that Ten Hag's demands, not financial demands, control, recruitment, structure, youth... 
I'm suspecting he's wanting to come in and make sure that he's not going to be exposed to what other managers have been exposed to in this last 10 years. And that's, that's, that's it. It, it's, it. There's going to be nothing unreasonable requested, I don't think, from Eric Ten Hag. I don't, know what, I don't know what's on that list. Maybe there are a couple of unreasonable requests, but fuck it, I hope there are. I hope that list is endless from Eric Ten Hag. As I said this, again, I've said this before, but Ten Hag is going to be coming in with a, with a similar sort of list to what a lot of United fans would go to the Glazers and say, these are the things that we need changed behind the scenes at our club. Ten Hag will... Almost be like a fan going in, you know, but not like a fan going in as manager, but his list would be very similar to a fan's list in terms of the things that we can see that's wrong with the club, the structure, the, the control and everything. And he wants to take that away from the owners and allow him to operate firmly as a football manager. Because Marcel van der Kran, uh, the sports editor at The Telegraph, hopefully we're going to get him on for an interview on United People's TV, fingers crossed. He was saying that He's somebody who's going to spend hours and hours and hours on that training ground. That's how you get a football system like that in, built into a team. Work, practice, consistently, constantly, almost to the point of being obsessive. And he used the Guardiola as a comparison. To be able to do that, you don't have time to be caught up in conversations about whether Paul Popper's going to sign a new deal, what's happening with Jesse Lingard or Cavani's future. That's not for him to direct. That's for the sporting director to direct. Lost my words there. I don't think that's going to be Ralph Rannick in a, in a full-time capacity. So someone needs to come in alongside that. We're going to be speaking about Paul Mitchell's, I'm sure, again in the future. But again, there's nothing unrealistic here in what Ten Hag is saying and what Gary Neville is saying in response to it, I don't think, anyway. And that might be too much for Manchester United. And I suspect they've got maybe a difficult week or two. You know, I still think they may get it over the line. But the reports this morning were such that, that Eric Ten Hag's put placing demands on the club that maybe got, are going above and beyond. Now, we don't... They won't be above and beyond what a reasonable expectation would be, they're above and beyond because Manchester United is such an incompetently run football club. That's where the above and beyond concept is coming from. If we were, as I said, if that same list is sent to City or Liverpool, 80% of it's going to be met before it's even, it doesn't even have to be written on the list because it's already done. But it's the fact that United just don't have any of that structure in that it might seem unreasonable to United's board. Whereas in reality, the unreasonable aspect is the fact that it's not already there. I don't know whether we should believe everything, but ordinarily nowadays, when things come out from the credible sources that we're seeing in more areas than one, we normally know that's, you know... The, no smoke with that fire. Yeah. The, the old adage from sometimes is, oh, what do you, you don't believe anything in the press. But that's actually false, actually, because journalists, they hear it from somewhere. And if you've got multiple sources that are credible reporting the same type of story, you can ordinarily believe there's something in it. Now, I have said this, you know, I know the whole, the whole Goldbridge gang, uh, the idea of spin, 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 and everything's just PR, PR, PR. News exists. And when it comes to Ducker, Ogden, Dawson, Ornstein, and everybody reporting at the same time, that's not spin, that's just straight up news. I kind of spoken about that a bit previously. But I think that the overall premise here of what Gary's saying, I mean, he's not finished, so we'll, we'll go back into it. But... There is, there is no un. I don't think it's un. For, number one, I don't think it's unreasonable for Gary Neville to be warning Eric Ten Hag. I think if we're being completely honest and we take our red tinted specs off, of course it, we, we'd be burying our heads in the sand as United fans to think that he wasn't getting warnings because he's seen what's happened to United in the last eight nine years, and it is a risky move for him. But when it comes to ambition, when it comes to reaching where you want to reach, sometimes you got to take a risk because risks equals rewards, risk, risk reward, whatever you want to call it. And if Ten Hag can come in and be the man to really change how that works at Manchester United, then he can be the man to shift there because this is, this is the issue for Manchester United and where we are. And it's all gone quiet on the Maurizio Pochettino front. So it all feels like it's all eggs in one basket with Ten Hag. I'll tell you one, one thing that I would say that uh, something that's been said about Gary and, and it's completely true as well is he wanted Pochettino, didn't he? So would he have the same sort of energy towards warning Maurizio Pochettino? You let me know what you think about that in the comments. I personally think he probably would. But if they can't get him over the line, what a position for Manchester United to be in. Sod if that. If they can't get a manager to come in that wants to come in because yep. of his demands on the way in about how the football club is run. And if you're Ralph Ranić and you're reporting into Ten Hag and, asking, and answering him honestly, which I suspect he will be, and if you're Van der Beek and answering him honestly, which I suspect he will be, and we know even yep. Van der Sar's over there, you know, who will be, at, you know, speaking to Ten Hag honestly. 
they'll be saying be very careful. They'll be saying be very careful about going to Manchester United because it can be a graveyard at this moment in time for reputations. Maybe it has been a graveyard for reputations for some people, but it's also been the birthplace of some of the big, the biggest reputations that there's ever been in the Premier League and there's ever been in English football or in football in general. And as I said, that's where ambition comes in. Whoever comes in and is able to do that, to take United out of the graveyard and to turn it into that new reborn version of Manchester United, it's going to be one of the greatest single modern era achievements. It's why Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, what he's done has been so impressive. As I, as I said, red tinted specs off. You have to um, admire is the wrong word, but you have to appreciate the good work that has gone in and how good Klopp has done at Liverpool and how good Cardiola has done at City. Match with how crap everything has been at Manchester United. So yeah, the, the idea that it's been a graveyard for reputations, that's true to a certain extent, but I don't. it doesn't stop the allure of how big this job is and why Ten Hag wants to become Manchester United manager. He wants the job. But United are seemingly making it as difficult as possible by having just such a poorly run club. Simple as that. Yo, Ralph Ranjit came in with an incredible reputation. And he still has that reputation. But he's, he's now starting to be wounded by what's happening around him. And he... oh, look, I've, I've already spoken about this. So we, we won't, we'll finish on that bit there. But I've spoken about how the fact that I personally feel that uh, Ralph Ranjit's reputation is in place. He came in having not been a manager for, what, two and a bit years? Um, and he came in with the experience of that sporting director role, working in Lokomotiv Moscow, working in uh, RB Leipzig, in Salzburg, as an overall part of the Red Bull brand. That's where his strengths are. We're yet to see the real strengths of Ralph Ragnick. Oh, no way, I'm going to be throwing, uh, throwing him under the bus. I want him as part of this new look United going forward. And the sort of thing that Eric Ten Hag is asking for are the sort of questions that Ralph Rannick can answer, I think, anyway. But going uh, back to Gary Neville here, and he's been speaking about Ten Hag there quite a lot. I, this, for me, sounded was pretty pertinent in terms of what my reaction was to that Everton game. From a Manchester United point of view, I've got very few words left. No anger. No comment anymore. Just almost a bit of a, a, bit of a farce, really. Sort of, uh, you expect it. From yeah, the, uh... I, I almost expect it. Don't really know what to say. Um, if you, that's how I felt after the Everton game. Completely, I was just like, you saw it in my reaction. It wasn't, it wasn't a time to be angry. It's like that, the time of anger is has left, and it's just been replaced by this sort of real gut wrenching feeling of acceptance, of not being surprised, of of expecting Manchester United to ultimately disappoint you, and that's completely true. And that's the sort of a feeling that Ten Hag has to replace. And it's why his job is so substantial. It's why his job is so huge and why he needs the support network around him. It's incredible that Manchester United have let it go this far. And that it's even more incredible that we've got a man there in Eric Ten Hag who can come into this club. And I firmly believe he can do an incredible amount of good. And we're still trying to make it as difficult as possible for him. And he wants the job. But what are we doing? What are we doing? We are a farce. We're a complete farce. Let's see what else Gary had to say here. I have to say, it's a real difficult position for the club to be at. I feel a little bit at this moment in time, like most Manchester United fans, that I don't know where to turn next. What's going to happen? No. Living on the, th the feeling still that one day the club will return. We know that. You know, these times when you go low, but this is, this is low. This is getting really low at this moment in time. And it will come back and you look forward to that day. That's where United are right now. We're at this, we've spoken, of, we've spoken about crossroads plenty of times before, but this is a real, real crossroad. With Eric Ten Hag, as I said, we've got a manager who's, in my opinion, is going to be going up to the elite level when he leaves Ajax. And I want that to be at Manchester United. But if we manage to turn him away, even the fact that he wants the job openly, and we just continue down this path that the Glazers have, led us down. I don't really I don't really see how we get out of it. If we manage to balls this out, and I don't think we will in terms of bringing him into the club. In terms of how it works when he's inside the club, that's different. But if we were to somehow end up without Ten Hag as our manager now after all of this, the disconnection that we'll all have with Manchester United will be extreme. Extreme. 
simply because I, I, he strikes me as a man that can really, truly help modernise our football club. And that's, just, that's something we need and something we want. But look, I, I like doing these videos. I like, I like taking a look at what Gary has to say because I respect Gary. So, you know, I know a lot of people don't. I, I, I'm not to say that he don't, but I don't really know why, if I'm being completely honest. Maybe it wasn't the fact that he spoke out when he wouldn't speak out against Solskjaer. Understood. No, oh, I didn't understand it. Kind of empathise a little bit because from the friend perspective, but because you've got to be a pundit, you have to be completely objective. That's what I try to be all the time. And objectively, I've taken a look here at Gary's comments. I think he's fair to warn Eric Ten Hag. I don't think it, the, the idea that it's a graveyard for reputations, yes, that's to a certain degree. But that's the last eight years. That's, that's minimising history. It's ignoring the narrative of what Manchester United have done as a football club. We are one of the biggest clubs in the world. Eric Ten Hag would love to be our manager. And I hope to God that these, as David Ornstein has said right here, if these demands are met, he will sign for Manchester United. And he's absolutely right to ask for it in writing. None of this verbal bollocks. Oh, yeah, you can have what you want. Don't worry about that. We've got you. No, writing. Because then you can hold the Glazers to account and say, you said this. You've broken the contract. I'm leaving. I want him to have that assurance because it, it will put Manchester United as a club in a better position to move forward. But I want to know what, what you think about Gary's comments. As I said, I like doing this video. I like having these conversations with you in the comments as well. So make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. What do you think about what Gary Neville had to say about Eric Ten Hag, the warnings for him? Do you think he went overboard? You let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Take it easy.